Gerald David. And I'm Kitty. And if you're anything like us, you have been self-isolating in your home for a while now and possibly having to feed yourself for the first time. So if that looks like what we're doing, it's coming out of a box. A box just like this one. Uh, there's a bunch of these programs. It really doesn't matter which one you use. It's all good, better, or best. We like the best, of course. And so what at first was kind of a burden turned into a bit of a blessing because now we just kind of accidentally turn into foodies. <laughs> uh, which means like it's really hard to go to normal restaurants now because they just kind of suck, you know. Um, we're trying to be social, distance, and be safe, and be mindful of all that stuff. So we just try to stay home. And tonight we're going to make sweet potato and... Sweet potato and mushroom bao. Very exciting. So we've got some hoisin sauce. We've got some furikake. Mayonnaise. Always exciting. Furikake. Mushrooms. Cremini or crimini. I'm not entirely sure. I've heard it both ways. Sesame seed oil. Sesame seed oil. We got oh, rice vinegar. Mmm, rice vinegar, another liquid. Radishes. I love radishes. The bow for your furkaki. And these are actually like buns that we're going to steam um, and then insert vegetables into. This is a vegetarian meal that we chose. Which is pretty cool because I've never steamed uh, much before, so it's interesting to see how that works. You've never steamed your buns before? <laughs> really? I probably have, but not I'll uh, see that at the I definitely didn't the eat time. them. I did not eat them after I steamed my buns. Got a little bit of sugar here. <laughs> That's probably good. Um, and some ginger. Also some carrots, Woo! a sweet potato, and some cabbage. Those are the some veggies yummy. of the vegetarian meal. Some yummy goodness. Mm -hmm. I like to uh, clean as we go. That keeps things pretty easy. One of the reasons why we used to hate cooking for ourselves when we're little is because you have to do this big pile of dishes. Because I don't know what kind of household you came from, but I came from a very large family in the beginning. so. No one wanted that chore. So we clean as we go. That way, when you're done, you're done. You can just sit down, and that's it. All you have to do is wash your plate. You eat and you relax. It's so much better than eating and then having to deal with the mound of dishes and then relaxing. Like, absolute incentive to clean as you go. And so no matter where yours comes from, uh, you're going to have some smartphone-type app or whatever to get your directions. Um, some send it to you in a card. We're going to start by preparing the ingredients. We're going to preheat the oven to 450. That's pretty basic. Hopefully you know how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, you probably need your parents. Uh, go get your parents. That's our advice there. The, um, or, you know, just come upstairs from the basement and ask your mom how to do it. It's fine. Fill the medium pot halfway up with some water and salt it. I'm not entirely sure what the salt does, but they usually tell you to salt water that you're boiling. So just as a rule of thumb, we do. And adds electrolytes. Okay, I think that's actually true. <laughs> I mean, don't Google it, but it might be. Put in the comments before. You're probably smarter below, I should say. You can see even proof of. <laughs> you're probably smarter than us, so you probably know. And you can correct us on whatever we get wrong. And the next time when we get it wrong, you'll know that we're doing it out of spite. <laughs> so we've got our oven preheated. We've got our water on to boil. The next thing that I'm we're going to do. I'm going to rinse the veggies do... while she reads that. And just FYI, we washed our hands before, so no judgment, okay? After and during. Yes, all of the times. Um, we're going to cut the sweet potato into quarter-inch thick rounds. Um, we're going to cut out and discard the core of the cabbage and thinly slice the leaves. And this is to peel the carrots. We never do that. Like, seriously, we wash them. It's all good. Most uh, nutrients and vegetables are held in the skin. Um, potatoes, that's true of all kinds of things. So... When you don't have to peel it, like we try not to. Um, so we won't peel the carrots, but we will chop them finely. This is grate them on the large side of a box grater, but I'm pretty sure we don't have a box grater. So we're just gonna chop them finely and things will be fine. So these are uh, one quarter inch rounds? Quarter inch rounds, that's yeah, quarter inch, quarter, quarter. I do it a little thinner so it cooks a little quicker. That's actually. Th no, I know what a quarter inch is, right there. Okay, I disagree. Really? You want to get a tape measure I think there? that's a quarter inch. Really? You think that's a quarter inch thick? No. Maybe. No. no. <laughs> maybe this not. is what you would call an eighth inch or maybe a sixteenth, not a quarter <laughs> inch. I don't want to do them that thick 
I actually like them a little crispy. Um, you Wait, this is supposed to be an inch, so that is half inch, if you're looking at. What are you talking about? From here to here on your finger is an no. inch. That right there is probably, anyway, we got to keep going. All right, so. fine. It doesn't matter quarter, if they're perfect or not. Cutting them into something close to quarter inch round. If you want to go full OCD and put a ruler to it, you can. I'm not going to do that. We do eyeball it all the time, um, which obviously leads to vigorous discussions about measurements. Um, this is a little bit hard to cut, so one of the tricks I like to do, things that are a little bit difficult, is call a friend, use Mr. Fork. Your buddy Forky. Yep. Yeah. And he can hold it while I cut it. This also helps you not slice your fingers off. Yeah, because the fork doesn't care. Um, not usually. We've only had one complaint. No. Um, yeah, that's too much of an end. Alright, what okay. do we do after that? After we slice the potato, um, we're going to cut out the and discard the core of the cabbage, and then we're going to thinly slice the leaves. So the way you do this is you cut in at an angle. Um, depending on how thick the core is, you may have to cut in at an angle on both sides, but it should come out in that kind of wedge shape. And then the rest of what you have is edible, usable cabbage. Um, so then we're just going to thinly slice the leaves. And we do it this way. Um, just typically because this is used for slaw and in a slaw type situation um what you want to do is base. A base. have very thin um leaves so that all of the other ingredients soak in okay you slice the cabbage thin so that you have like some nice strands um and then all of the ingredients soak in you don't you're not left with these little tiny short shards that you're trying to get a mouthful of on a fork so we tend to leave these a little bit long like that so that's good. Boom. What's next? The cabbage is done. Now we're going to finely chop the carrots. Obviously get rid of the ends first. We do still do that even though we don't peel them. Uh -huh. Not the best. So I like to go probably safer than just super fast. I can get gimsy with it for a while, but the closer it gets to my hand, the less likely I am to do that. I like my hand. That, and I just really don't want to go to a hospital in this in these times of ours. So be a little extra safe because hospitals extra suck. Yeah, slow and steady wins the race. Um, the other thing you want to do is make sure that when you chop off the ends, you grab them and throw them out I did. so you don't have to lick oh. them. I mean, no, I did not. She was absolutely correct. It's always good to take a second look. I know there's another one somewhere, but I can't find it. So eventually we will. I know what we can find. Right oh, you cool. found it? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm then going to peel and finally chop the ginger. So yes. to peel ginger, here is another little trick. I'm behind you. I'm going to rinse this off. Ginger is actually uh, relatively soft. And you are able to peel it with a spoon, and it just tends to go way better. Um, you know, you've heard of yeah. avocadoing your hand. You don't want to ginger your hand either. So let's use a spoon. If you really have to get crazy, a butter knife. But um, try for the spoon. It typically works pretty well. You just hold it to the edge. This is coming off in, there we go, a little bit. Flakes. And are and those flakes, flake what we, is, do we bit. want to keep those, or those yeah. in the trash? These are peels, so they're going to go in the trash. Ooh, while she does that, I'm going to rinse the mushrooms. These are shiitake mushrooms. Huh. Are they or are they crimini? Crimini. Oh, these are crimini. 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 Or crimini. And then where's my furry cocks? Furry cocky? Uh, yeah, that's, that's right here. Be right there, yes. So for cocky and crimini. See, they're very fun to say as well as cook for the word people out there. I know most of you think you use words, but some people really use words. I know that doesn't make sense. Unless it does. And you can see as I'm peeling this ginger, this is why we wear aprons, because this is flying everywhere. It's a lot of fun. All right, so we've got the ginger peeled. We're assessing that damage and getting that put up. Uh, and then we're going to, I believe, chop it up pretty quickly. Um, yeah, finally chop the ginger. And Gerald is demonstrating some great knife skills here. The way the blade is rocking against the cutting board when he's chopping it. Um, that's just like a super easy way to get like thinner slices. Not have to worry about sending stuff everywhere as you chop. So we're going to get 
that ginger finely chopped. Um, there is a lot of produce in this uh, in this meal. This is not super typical. She tricked me into being healthy, y'all. I know, I did. Um, our water is boiling, so let me see what we're gonna do with that. I think we steamed the uh, the bow. Oh, that makes sense. That's way down here, so. We're doing good. I think we do this while you do that. Teamwork, it helps. It does. I wash, you dry. It makes a difference. So, instruction number five is steam the buns. And the way it says to do this is to rest a strainer or a colander. If you don't know what a colander is, it's the thing you strain pasta in. A we know you know what a colander is. You didn't need that. that. But in case you do. Um, cause like I said, this may be the first time for some of you guys, it's always nice to have somebody to find weird kitchen terms. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> we don't judge unless we are judging, then, then we kind of do. Oh, so strainer, face mask. We do have a strainer or slash face mask apparently. <laughs> um, we're going to put it over this pot of boiling water, but we're going to make sure that the water does not reach the bottom of the strainer. Which it kind of does, so we're going to alleviate that a bit. It probably needs to be pretty low because it's going to have to boil while the strainer rests in it. Like, is that a possibility? Can there be water in there? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. All right. So once that gets going again, um, we're going to place the buns in the strainer. And it doesn't take much water. Very little. Very little. And we're only going to steam them for three to five minutes. So, like, that amount of water is fine. If you were going to leave it for ten minutes, you might be in trouble. I left some water boiling today. My tea ended up being this deep instead of this deep because I forgot it was on the eye. Oh, but we also want to cook and glaze the mushrooms. Oh, we're doing a lot of other stuff. That's way down. But our water was boiling, so we jumped ahead. The, um... Let's also, at the same time, start cooking and glazing our mushrooms. It calls for how much oil, babe? Um, just a drizzle. So I'm going to go ahead and get those mushrooms cut up. While he's getting that pan heating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just slice those. I'll read ahead when you do that. And again, like, just a note on any of these um, boxed meals. Like, know your own oven. Because this says put everything on medium high. Um, we don't do that. And it works out fine. Um, so just kind of, like, play with those settings if it's not working out for you. I'm going to the mushrooms. And all we're going to do with them is slice them. Um, and then once that gets going, we'll cook them in an even layer. That's Very perfect. Exciting. And while she cuts those, I'm going to do the sweet potatoes. One of the cool things about having help is being able to kind of conquer and divide. The reason we preheated the oven earlier was for these guys. The sweet potato rounds. Oh, those are good right there, Katie. Look at those. Criminy, criminy, criminy. That bright mushroom, the sweet potato rounds look amazing. I'm very excited about those. So it's going to put these in for 18 to 20 minutes. I usually just pick in between at 19. I like mine a little well done, but I'll still check them. It's better to check early than too late. Can't go back in time, but you can wait. Ooh, that rhymes. Mm -hmm. Look at me being poetical on accidental. All right. Those are in. Timer is started. So just another tip. Um... Sweet potatoes, when you can use them in place of regular potatoes, are lower on the glycemic index. Uh, so they have less of an impact on um, your blood sugar and spiking them rather than the starch in regular potatoes, which is going to spike your blood sugar a little bit more. So it's just a friendlier option um, to be a little bit healthier. And that is also why sweet potato fries are actually a better choice than regular potato fries. Now that those are in the oven, we've got a little bit of time. I'm going to make the slaw. So let's get a large bowl. I don't know if that's big enough, so I'll get one of these from way down here. Out of this cabinet things. And it and if says... You, if you do grab 
grab something out of the abyss, please make sure to rinse it at least. Wash it preferably, but at least rinse it. And it says whisk together the sugar, sesame oil, and half the vinegar. Here's the sugar. The sesame oil and half the vinegar. Is that what I said? That is what you said. Awesome. It's hard to remember things. It is. I end up looking at the freaking instructions like 15 times because I'm always worried I'm going to get it wrong. Even though we read them in advance. You know how it is. You read 40 instructions in advance. What do you remember? The last one. <laughs> half the vinegar. Which the way I do half the vinegar. Enjoy. The way I do half the vinegar is I look at the label and where it sits. Just take a note and then just kind of put your finger where that is. Wait, Ooh. wait. And then just kind of dome it in. It's half the vinegar I read. It was half the poison sauce and the remaining vinegar, so I don't know what the no, other No, you're not looking at the right thing. I'm doing the okay. slaw. Cool. Yeah, so I'm you already this. did the vinegar for the mush? Oh, okay. That's fine. No. Great. You can do the mushrooms. I'm doing the slaw. Okay. So I'm just right wherever the slaw is, which I have these also over here, so I kind of know what's going on on top of that. Now I'm adding the, the, um, the sugar, sesame oil, and half the vinegar, whisking that together. I just like to use a fork because it kind of gets it even. If you have a whisk and you want to be fancy, do that. Yeah, if you want to put those mushrooms in and do their thing. And it says just do it till the sugar dissolves. You can tell when your pan is ready if you have olive oil in it by the viscosity of the olive oil. If it flows around the pan really smoothly, then um, your oil is ready, your pan is up to temperature. If it's like slow and viscous, then you need to leave it on there a little bit longer. Alright, next it says, Woo. add the sliced cabbage, grated carrots. carrots we don't really have a grater here so we just kind of chop them up small you know you just kind of make it work whatever you got you get as close it ain't going to be that big a difference in taste and the size of something or a technique is slightly different so we just get these small which is actually pretty easy to do if you have a good knife and the more you do it the easier it all gets like when we first started doing it with a big chore we look forward to it for a little bit then you get close and you're like oh but that's like work you have to do something Nowadays, I'm kind of excited to be able to do something to kind of create or kind of just be a part of the process a little bit more. Uh, but what it really comes down to is the taste. It's really, really, really hard to get over what a quantitative difference there is between the flavors and what I experience when I sit down and eat one of these versus go to the majority of most restaurants. There are, of course, some exceptions. Don't chop up your fork now. Kitty, how's it coming over there? Going well, we've got the mushrooms in. We're going to cook them without stirring for two to three minutes. So I've gone ahead and put that on three because we keep our um, oven temperature lower than the recommended. We typically do it to the longest amount of time, um, and that usually works out pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and cook those without stirring for three minutes. Um, and then we're going to add the remaining chopped ginger and season it with salt and pepper. So I'm very much mm -hmm. looking forward to that. Half that ginger goes into the slaw, doesn't it? Uh, that's very possible. See how the pieces get smaller the more I chop, chop, chop them up? And it's really easy to go super overboard with this, but there's really no wrong answer. Guys, half the chopped ginger goes into the sauce. Look at you know in your stuff. Half the ginger and all the carrots. That's a lot of carrots. It is very yummy. I love carrots. Good for your eyes. At least that's what some internet person said, so who knows? Alright. Let me look what the next instructions of that was. Oh, and now it gets the pakake and half the chopped ginger. Oh, we're going to do the half chopped ginger. Dude, this is my favorite word to say. What is this? Is this like a seed or a season or... 
It's seasoning, yeah. It looks like a collection of things. Mm -hmm. And how do you say it? For a cocky? Oh. I believe. I don't know. Correct us if we're wrong. Um, and then we kind of mix this together. And then once we've got that all mixed up, we're going to set it aside to marinate. Um, and we're going to leave it at least 10 minutes and stir it occasionally to mix things up. All right. What's next? What are we doing with the radishes? I'm curious. So we're going to have the radishes lengthwise and then thinly sliced across it. I'm going to do those. You let me wash them. Okay. She just wants to handle the knife, y'all. The fun part. No, I just want to cut something up. All I've got to do are the mushrooms. Isn't that what I just said? Handle the knife. So we're going to have them lengthwise and then to thinly sliced crosswise. You just hold the halves together that you just cut. How much time is left on the uh, mushrooms here? I don't know. How would I find that out? Uh, you would go to that timer out. Oh, two seconds. And you're just going to rock the blade back and forth. Okay. At this point, as that timer went off to the mushrooms, they're now going to add the remaining chopped ginger, some salt and pepper, and add that timer for two more minutes. So step aside just real quick, Kitty. Where do you want me to go? It's fine. I just want to borrow that knife for two seconds. Slice this in. Boom. Work is now back to you. And that timer is now set for two minutes. So what else do we need to add to this? I have no idea. That's the fun of cooking, y'all. It's always an adventure. Oh, nothing. That's it. It's once that timer goes off, we'll then add half the hoisin sauce and the remaining vinegar. I knew there was something we were eventually going to add. Um, and then after that, we'll steam the buns. Yummy. I think I'm going to take a peek on those sweet potatoes and see what they look like. They're about halfway through. You can't see too much discoloration or anything, but you can smell them when you open that up. Stir these mushrooms a little bit. All our water has evaporated out of our little steam, because I think we jumped ahead a little bit. We left a lot of steam. And that's what we were talking about, about forgetting about the boiling water. Well, that's awesome. It happens. It does not always go right the first time, but guess what? Typically, the mistakes you make, you will be able to recover from, just like this one. So there's a little bit of steam in the air, but we're about to get right back on track anyway. I think normally we would have been a little bit on pace and our little timing's off a little bit, but that's the great thing about it. It's just boiled water. I've never seen an instant flash boil when I tried to refill it like that, but let's try again. There we go. Once these mushrooms go off, I'm going to set that on there to start. Check on these mushrooms. We will look at that now that I've added the ginger. Those are very pretty. Mm. Criminy, criminy, criminy. I like saying that word. That's a fun word to say. And that timer should be close to going off, too. Yep, eight seconds. At which point, what do I do? That's when I add the half a hoisin sauce and the remaining vinegar. So half of the hoisin sauce and the remaining vinegar. Vinegar. Hard to tell what half is on the hoisin sauce, but I'll do... The remaining vinegar. There you go. Yes. Probably just use a spoon. Probably the easiest thing. I don't want to risk dumping it all in there. Poison sauce is a little bit thick too, so if you're gonna um, like try to get all of it out, you definitely want to use a spoon of some sort to be able to yeah, scrape that, that out. Thicker than it looked. Thicker than it looked. Because it's a little viscous. It kind of resembles soy sauce, but it's a much thicker version. I think we need to set a timer for like 30 seconds. Okay. I'm stirring it up. Now it's good. Looks good. Doing it. Doing it. Ooh, it's starting to smell really delicious. There's something too. I think things taste better when you're a little bit hungry. They say that's the secret spice, hunger. And I believe in it. So when you're doing this and you're kind of working up an appetite and you're smelling everything and getting used to what these flavors might be like when that magic happens, 
Um, it's really kind of like helps you appreciate everything. Kind of like, oh, I did this. And I think that's pretty, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, oh, that's eight seconds already. Wait, it was only set for 30. It goes back quick. It does. What do we do with this once that's done? That's a very great question. Taking that off the heat. Uh, the mushrooms, once we've done all of that. Uh, yeah, season with salt and pepper if desired. That's it. They're done. Salt and pepper. Now it's going to be steamed the buns soon. So we've got six and a half minutes left on our sweet potato rounds that are in the oven, which is about perfect because the buns steam for three to five. Um, so we'll be able to get about a batch of those at some point. Um, and we'll have to do them in two batches because obviously our uh, colander there, our little um, sieve, is not going to accommodate more than three of those. All right, let that get back up to... So what does it say to you next? Can you steam the buns? That's pretty much it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, you can um, combine the mayonnaise and remaining poison, and then taste to season with salt and pepper. Apparently that is a topping. I guess what I'm not seeing is where is the radishes? Where is that in here? That's valid. That's a valid question. Oh, here we go. You're going to... Oh, it's like the very first steps that somehow we skipped. Dribble olive oil and salt and pepper. That's the part. Oh, we're I marinating forgot. them. Okay. Understood. So here are radishes. Yum 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 yum. Boom. And we're just gonna add a little drizzle of olive oil, some salt and pepper, um, mix that all up, and then set them to the side and let them do their thing. And then what do the radishes get uh, added to? They just go in the bun. Oh, that's right. Yeah. A little, little touch of olive oil. Uh-huh. And olive oil, is, stuff up. olive oil is one of those things, too, where you can taste the quality. Um, it's one of those things that's worth it getting, you know, good olive oil. Don't, that's one place. Don't go cheap. And there are brands that give all of their profits to charity. We love them. So mm -hmm. go ahead and look for those when you're in the store. Oh, so that's ready for that. And I'm going to it. I'm going to wash these guys. Can we get a little bit of jump on that? I'm going to go ahead and combine the mayo and hoisin. Oh, yes. Because that's pretty easy. This one I start getting excited because it means we're getting close to eating. I know when most of the dishes are getting done, we're getting close. And if you want to take this one, I'll be great. Thank you. Of course. Me and Kitty started cooking, I think about two years ago, um, with these. Close to that. And at first, I didn't know really what to think of it. We kind of used it as a way to save money and a way to kind of have an activity that we could share. It's hard when you have your own separate careers and everyone's doing their own thing to find more and more ways to connect. And it helps to have a project where both you can look back and say, we, we did this, we accomplished this. And few projects speak to the fundamentals of human nature as food does. It's tied to our very survival. And there's people that are barely getting by, and there's people that are clearly riding high on the hog. And I've never really defined those things by bank accounts. I've defined those things by how well did you sleep and how well did you eat. Uh, there's a third part to that I won't share. Uh, <laughs> but that's a little bit of a family uh, fable, I guess you would say, or motto or something. I don't know. I'm not really good at that kind of stuff. I don't know what that'd be. What would your family call it kind of saying? What? What would your family call that kind of saying? A little family motto or crescent or whatever? Um, oh, the word is escaping me right now. But so people overcomplicate a lot of things in life. And really what it comes down to is how well did you eat and how well did you sleep? That talks about guilt, morality. That also just talks about the quality of your freaking mattress. You know what I mean? Um, you lay with dogs, you're going to get fleas. Um, that's not a judgment. I mean, that's just a reaction from the world. <laughs> I'm going to wash this guy off real quick. Coming in right behind you. Yep. Yeah. Right Is this ready to go? Getting close. Yeah, you can probably put two or three in there. Is it supposed to be boiling? It's getting pretty close, I said, yeah. I know it's getting close. Is it? I'm just trying to figure oh, out. Oh, yes, it should be boiling. Oh, okay. We're not quite there yet. We're really close. This poison mayo sauce looks really good. 
Um, if you've ever had hoisin, um, I love it. It's an um, Asian, um, kind of like a soy sauce, but thicker and a little bit sweeter. Um, and it's absolutely fabulous. What is this you made? That's the hoisin mayo sauce I was just Ooh, talking about. Yummy. Ooh, that does look good. And the radishes, these will be the next up. Okay, so for the buns, we're, once we put them in the steaming... Um, Appreciate a good set of buns when you can. <laughs> it's important. Hashtag feminist. This is now boiling. Oh, it is. Um, so we're going to put our buns in there working in shifts. Oh, you're fine. Just step over this way. Okay. We're going to put our buns in there, um, just kind of working in shifts. And it looks like we're going to be doing two at a time. No, no, you can fit three, I bet. I hope they don't stick together. Just trying to use the peaks. They got some peaks that are a little bit steeper than others. Sorry, and then no, no, we no, have to. I'm not ready for that. Oh, yet. sorry. Just heard me. Right. Okay, and then we're gonna cover that with that, and we're gonna leave it for three to five minutes. So we'll go ahead and leave it for four. Mm -hmm. Typically, when it gives a range of time, we go for the mid time as like a check-in point. Um, and that seems to work out pretty well. So we've got it set for four minutes, and we'll check those after four minutes. Ooh, yummy. I'm super excited. What kind of meal is this? Where does bao come from? Is that like a, is that an Asian thing, or what is that? I believe it's Asian. I want to say Japan, but I could be super wrong on that. Because that's the thing with this. It's really kind of exposed me to a lot of things. Before, one of my problems was you'd go through the supermarket and you don't even know what you don't know. So you don't even really know what you really want. You know, um, and when you're young, you're kind of just getting used to whatever has the best commercials. Whoever has the best commercials, that's probably what you're gonna eat. Um, it's not really the best way to make decisions in life. Um, you wanna be eating whatever makes you feel the best. Uh, your youthful body has a way of being able to process all this stuff and kind of handle the, uh, the burden <laughs> of eating crap all the time a little bit better. But eventually you get to an age and all of a sudden you're like, ah, I feel like crap. This kind of eating really kind of brings that together. Oh, look, I successfully filled the space of the time I should talk. <laughs> so apparently there is an eight minute short movie called Bao, um, which is a woman who is suffering from empty nest syndrome gets a second shot at motherhood when one of her handmade dumplings springs to life. So that's fascinating. Um, but an actual Bao dumpling uh, Bao is a type of filled bun or bread-like made with yeast dumpling in a variety of Chinese cuisines. Okay, so I was totally wrong on that. That is Chinese, not Japanese. Um, but basically, it's just a... Was it Chinese? Is that what it said? Yes. It's basically just a dumpling that you, is made with yeast and filled. Um, so these are... Looks like a duck bill. Bao. Very awesome. They're a little bit like donuts in a weird way. I just checked on the sweet potatoes. They're looking good. They're not quite to the level of burnt that I like them. Um, you're pro you would probably pull them out about now. <laughs> um, what else do we have that we're waiting on? Looks like we only got about a minute before I'm going to take the bow off. Is that about right? Let's say a minute 42. It does help, too, if you have multiple timers. We try and use the phone, but sometimes it helps if you just have more timers. Mushrooms are over here just chilling. I'm gonna stir those up a little bit. How are you feeling, Kitty? Is it tasting good? Yeah, everything seems like it's going really well. Um, we got our water situation back under control, so the uh, the buns are now steaming. Um, my guess is we're gonna have to add more water after those because I don't think that water is still gonna be there, but being able oh, to yeah. keep that water a level where it is not touching the buns while it's boiling, that's a pretty low level. So you really have to keep an eye on that one. Um, but those seem to be doing well. Lots of steam coming out, which is a good indicator. I know, we're running out of things to talk about. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> we don't know how to fill space. Sometimes when you're cooking, things just keep you super busy. Sometimes you get a little bit of moment to relax. Um, you don't get like, you don't want to wander off. You don't get that kind of time really on this one. Um, but you do get just enough where you have to think of like witty banter. And we're, hopefully we're going to get better at, you know, witty banter. And just call us on our bullshit. Um, you can just put it in the comments, you know, below or sideways or up. I don't really know what you're on or what you're using. Yeah, the, the comments um, are below. We probably won't read them, but I'll pretend to read them. And in that way, we can pretend to bond. It'd be awesome. 
<laughs> the, um, I'm going to eat one I'll of these. I'll eat them, and then I'll mm. tell them him about them. Don't worry. Oh, that's really good. Try one of these. I believe it. I love radishes. Mm. Is that our first session of bow? That is. What do I do with these once they're ready to come out? Transfer to a work surface. Okay. This is a work surface. There you go. Oh, yeah. Look at those. So now they are way more pliable and able to be opened up so that we can fill them. And very, very you hot. hot. You can just... No, but it's not really... This one's oh, it's stuck? Yeah. Let me try a little trick. Maybe your friend the fork could help. Now, I put a little bit of cold water on it, and it makes that surface congeal just a bit. And they made it free right up without tearing it or risking losing the rest of it. Please right. tell Gerald how much you like his steam buns in the comments below. Because I'm going to kick out of that. Sticky buns. Yeah, there's a, probably a little bit enough of a water. I'll add a little bit of water to this, but it doesn't need as much as I thought. And then, basically, we're just going to gently open them. Oh. And we're going to fill them with poison mayo. The roasted sweet potato, glazed mushrooms, and seasoned radishes. And that's it. Yummy. And then the slaw will go on the side. Yummy. All right. I'm just going to stick these on the plate since I don't want to have to handle them after we've stuffed. That's why they're just ready. bills or whatever. If you hold it back, I'll dip in a little bit of our poison. And remember, there's six. There it is. There it is. Boom, boom. And we'll go on. Did we set a timer for that second set? I don't think so. Mm. I didn't know you dropped them. Oh, I have not. The water is boiling. Oh, okay. I will drop those. See how sometimes just asking the question <laughs> leads to an answer to some other shit you messed up? Um, all right, now, yeah, set a timer. Okay. And as soon as those go in, we've got four minutes. Oh, yeah, that steam burns you, too, not just it does, the buns. It does. All right, timer is going. Rinse this bowl real quick. Do you want to pull out those sweet potatoes now? Yep, I think I do. Let's look at those guys. Oh, oh perfect. Perfect. Four radishes in each of them is a general number. Um, I feel like we're gonna have enough for Turn them. off the oven. Super important. Yeah, it really is important to turn off like your eyes and oven. So um, make sure you're doing that. You know? And we don't say that in some smart ass kind of way. We say <laughs> it because we've done it to ourselves a bunch. Yeah, where we've come in way later and been like, oh my god, the oven's still on. And it's like an hour and a half after mm. we cook dinner. So mm. seriously, check that. Make sure it's off. Also, go ahead and check it before we preheat it. There's a lot of times I find a pizza box in there. Sometimes before. Oh, these are very good. They're very hot. But that's how it turned out. Boom. Very pretty. Golden. Here, I'm just going to stack these on here. Okay. That way they're just ready for you and I can clean this. divided these up um, just based on how many buns we have, you know, and how many sweet potato slices we have. So each of them will get two of these rounds. Um, and that is going to do it. And can you bring the mushrooms over? Yeah. yeah. Mushrooms. And if we have a little spoon or a fork or... Uh, just use that fork, I guess. Yeah. I'm use the hoisin mayo fork because at this point it does not matter. All no, it's all mixed to together. The, the same place. Sometimes it does matter. So we try and use as little dishes as we possibly can. Uh, within reason, though, I don't try and go full OCD on it. Oh, those look incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, what we can also do is go ahead and plate the coleslaw next to this, and this plate will be correct and be done. Not correct, I meant to be complete. It'll be both. Speaking is hard, y'all. Talking to folk is hard. All right. So for this one. Put 
fresh little stir. These meals pretty much feed two people, three if you're small people, one if you're like me. No, uh, and I used to kind of think that it wouldn't be enough. You know, you kind of look at the portions and you're not really sure what kind of used to being whatever. It is enough. Yeah, it absolutely is. Oh, look at that. And Gerald will tell you, even the vegetarian ones, like they usually compensate um, with the amount for the lack of animal protein. Um, but also, don't be afraid to add some mac and cheese to it or whatever. Or a piece of chicken or, you know, a piece of protein that you like. You can always do that on your own as well. Look how beautiful that came out. Delicious. <laughs> I'm Gerald David. I'm Kitty. This is Two Aprons.